Next, we have um, ALSI, a cordial odyssey. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, topic of my presentation is a cordial odyssey. I'm presenting on behalf of Medicine 4. So uh, presenting Mrs. R, uh, Ms. R, 26 year old uh, lady from Mizoram, who presented with fever for two weeks, headache and vomiting for two weeks, sensory loss and inability to move the bilateral lower limbs for two weeks. History of presenting complaint. She was a known case of SLE since 2018. So um, her fever was high grade intermittent without chills and rigors, which subsided on paracetamol and headache was localizing to the bifrontal region, moderate in the in intensity, not relieved by the over, uh, over the counter drugs. There were no constitutional symptoms like a preceding aura, phonophobia, photophobia, or a retroorbital headache, uh, retroorbital eye pain, retroorbital pain. Uh, vomiting was uh, projectile, uh, it was non-bilious, non-blood stain. Food was content about three to four episodes uh, per day. Um, so with these symptoms of fever, headache and vomiting, she got admitted on 7th of uh, this month. And in the hospital about 6 a.m. in the morning, she when she went to the bathroom, she felt uh, lower abdominal full, uh, fullness and she was unable to void. So around 9 a.m. she was catheterized and about 750 ml of urine was drained, but she could not feel the uh, when she could not feel the uh, catheter going in. Around 9:30 a.m. she felt severe pain in bilateral lower limb, starting from the distal foot, progressively increasing up to the thigh, followed by difficulty in lifting both upper and lower limb from bed. But on that day she was able to move sideways and sit on her own. On the next day, on 8, she was uh, un unable to completely move her both legs and uh, all the sensations were absence below the hip. There was no definite band-like sensation, no history of disturbance, difficulty in lifting head from below or breathing difficulty, no history of difficulty in swallowing or any nasal regurgitation, no history of any vaccination or no, no history of any trauma. Past history wise, um, she was diagnosed uh, with SLE in 2018. She was started on 1 mg per kg steroid, HCQ and uh, MMF. With the three drugs, she had significant improvement. But in 2022, December, she stopped taking her drugs abruptly. Um, examination wise, her vital signs were stable. There was pallor, no ictus sinus uh, clubbing or lymphadenopathy. She had palatal ulcers, no malar rash at present, but there were few uh, healed scars secondary to previous uh, photosensitive rash not noted in the skin exposed areas. No cutaneous lesion or a discoid plug. There were no tender or swollen joints at presentation or any uh, evidence of uh, Reynolds phenomenon. Um, going on to the CNS examination, her higher mental functions were uh, normal. She was right-handed. Cranial nerve examination was unremarkable. Motor examination, she had bi bilateral lower limbs were hypotonic. No neck muscle weakness or paradoxical breathing. Power was 5 by 5 in both upper limbs, 0 by 5 in both hips, knee and ankles. Beaver sign was positive. Reflexes, superficial and deep abdominal reflex were uh, absent in the lower quadrant of the abdomen and deep tendon reflexes, both knee and uh, angle jacks were absent. Sensation, loss of touch, pain, vibration and joint position sense uh, with the sensory level at T10. Uh, Parectal examination uh, lacks anal tone and uh, gait was not assessed. She did not have any meningeal signs. Um, skull and spine examination was normal. Uh, so, uh, summarizing, she is a 26-year-old uh, lady with history of uh, SLE, now presented with acute uh, onset, progressive, symmetric, sensory and motor deficits with autonomic involvement. So, I um, anatomically localizing um, to the spinal cord because there were more than two tracks involved. Um, and her motor level was at T10, sensory level was at T10. So, um, the, we, I con we considered a syndrome of complete spinal cord uh, transduction at the level of T10. Uh, 
um, what do you think are the differentials at this point? Can you just give your differentials? This is my. It's okay, say it out, doesn't matter. Tell Tony. Huh? Huh? Okay. Anything else? Someone with SLE who is treated, who is present with a sudden onset at a complete. It's not working. Yeah, it's working. Go on. It's working. Just one so this one. Okay. It's okay, move on in the lack of time. Um, so so the differential, the first differential we thought was transverse myelitis and she presented with fever. We were thinking of a post-infectious uh, uh, post uh, uh, pathology first and an autoimmune uh, disease like SLE causing a transverse myelitis or an NMSOD. Tumor like a metastatic, but it was highly unlikely. Even a trauma, she did not have any history of any trauma. Um, so going on to the investigation, her complete blood count showed hemoglobin of 8.8 uh, normocytic picture with uh, normal counts. Her renal function test was, uh, creat was 0 0.77 with urea of 101. Electrolytes were, uh, uh, electro, uh, metabolic parameters were within normal limits. LFT had um, um, uh, elevated alkaline phosphatase. So um, LDH was 352 with DCT 2 plus. ANA 2 plus speckle with the, the DSDNA of uh, 278. Her complement C3C was low, C4 was low borderline, and the RNP was positive. SSA, SSB was also positive. SSA was more positive than B. ESR, C, uh, ESR was elevated. CRP was uh, within normal range. APLA workup and the cardiolipin was uh, mildly elevated, uh, whereas beta glycoprotein and lupus anticoagulant was negative. Um, so, um, the NMSOD serum as well as CSF sample was actually negative. Uh, oligoclonal antibodies are actually awaited. CSF had glucose of 20 with protein 54. Total counts of 46 with 89% uh, lymphocytes. RBCs were 6 with, uh, and reactive lymphocytes were present. CNS culture was negative. Urine analysis had actually shown RBCs of 11 with WBC 8 with uh, blood of 2 plus and protein 3 plus. Face contrast had shown 22% uh, dysmorphic RBCs with a urine 24-hour protein showing about 4 gram of protein. 
Um, so um, this investigation, the investigation was suggestive of, uh, I mean, she she already had SLE, so we've uh, 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 we repeated the test to uh, do that. So uh, her MRI, we did the MRI. MRI had shown uh, long uh, segment hyperintensity of the medulla and cord extending from obex to mid uh, mid C4 vertebral body and uh, from uh, C7 to co corner. So only between C4 and C7, the cord was spared. The rest of the area, there was there was hyperintensity. Um, so our final diagnosis based on the investigation, uh, clinical examination, investigation, as well as the uh, imaging was uh, systemic lupus erythematosus with uh, ACR ULA criteria 15, uh, lupus nephritis because she had a uh, urine protein elevated with uh, dysmorphic RBCs, uh, renal biopsies awaited and uh, longitudinally extensive transverse myelitis because more than two vertebral uh, segments were involved. So I am going to talk about um, case series where uh, lupus erythrum, uh, SLE, was, uh, SLE was presenting as a longitudinal extensive transverse myelitis. So this is a study from Pakistan in a 26-year-old boy who was a, um, who presented with high-grade fever uh, with burning maturation and uh, progressive bilateral low volume weakness and urinary retention. His physical examination also had bilateral low volume weakness, absent reflexes and mute plantar. Again, sensory level at T10. His imaging had shown uh, hyperintensity from T5 to L1, suggestive of a LETM. Uh, investigation, blood investigation had shown uh, ANA positive as well as DSDNA positive, indicative of SLE. So they had treated him with steroid pulse. Um, a steroid pulse followed by oral pre oral prednisolone and uh, IV uh, cyclophosphamide. So another is a case series of five uh, patients. It was from Argentina, done from 2007 to 14. Uh, here all the four, all the five patients were women. Mean age was 25.4. And out of these uh, five patient, uh, SLE, uh, the ma first manifestation of SLE was myelitis. So these patients, the clinical picture fever was the most common uh, as associated manifestation and one of them had glomerulonephritis at presentation and another one had acute arthritis. All of them had investigation showing a high positive ANA and uh, five, uh, four out of five had low complement levels and three of them had antiphospholipid positive. And uh, three out of five had uh, longitudinal extensive myelitis and MRI. So again, all of them were treated uh, mainly with methyl prednisolone and cyclophosphamide anticoagulation in those who had APLA positive. So in this study, uh, the prognosis was only about 40% uh, partial recovery and 40% did not show much improvement and one of them died due to sepsis. Where there is another study which had shown um, in which another study which was uh, in had 20 patients um, had showed actually 60 to 100 uh, percent recovery uh, in an year. So what is longitudinal extensive transverse myelitis? It is a neurological condition characterized by contagious inflammatory lesion of the spinal cord. So it is often associated with autoimmune central nervous system disease, uh, neuromyelitis optica and uh, rarely with uh, multiple sclerosis. LETM is defined uh, by a spinal MRI indicating a lesion extending over three or more vertebral segments. So, like I said, NMSOD is the most common cause of LETM, but whereas other there are causes such as multiple sclerosis, MOGAD, ADAM, even SLE, uh, Jogren's, uh, neurobasic, uh, paraneoplastic myelitis can also uh, present as LETM. Um, so what happened to our patient? So CSF and serum had ruled out NMSAD uh, and um, she had a proven SLE. Oligoclonal antibodies are awaited. Um, we had involved rheumatology, neurology and nephrology. We started around methyl pret uh, 500 mg pulse for five days followed by oral prednisolone of 1 mg per kg. We had given IVIG also for 20 gram for five days with uh, uh, as, as rituximab as the second line. Um, so clinically, she at present she did not uh, she does not have any gross improvement, but uh, mild tingling and burning sensation in the bilateral lower limbs. 
So learning point is LATM is a neurological condition characterized by inflammation of the spinal cord. And uh, though most common, uh, uh, most common uh, cause of LATM is NMSOD, uh, for somebody with uh, systemic uh, SLE, we should always consider that as an etiology and treatment is immunosuppression. Questions? This one. Complete spinal, complete spinal cord transduction. What is transduction? The level. So. It's transaction. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the mm -hmm. Some people have to work over phone or whatever transaction, and you will have to do the transaction. So, that's what happens. You say it's exposed to all the other transactions. Okay, so please understand the terms. The difference in the neurological symptoms, usually, it's based on associated symptoms and duration. It was uh, more of acute to subsequent. Exactly. It's not hyperacute. Like the Um, so because uh, it, because the MRI spine had showed LD. Exactly. Basic investigations. Next is confirmation of diagnosis. You got the sciences monitor, show that the MRI could rise up because it showed all the extension as of the You validate for the process. Doing an MRI screen at the end of it. All that you know is this patient has a silly file. You cannot prove the validation. Yes. So you further tell me that that's what we need. From our experience. Both sides are discussion. Thank you. Lack of time, we'll go on to the next presentation. We have Akash, Angels versus a demon from Medicine 3. 